Thank you so much, brothers and sisters in Christ. Good morning. Good morning. Has it been good? Yes. But you didn't sound like it. <laughs> Could you just turn to the person next to you, uh, whom I shall be saying your neighbor, not the one staying next door to you at home, but the person sitting next to you, if there's no one sitting next to you, then uh, well, you should know that, uh, that the Holy Spirit is next to you. Do I hear amen? amen? Although he's in you, but he's beside you and he's among you, Amen. So please turn to the person next to you and say, I can see a child inside you. I can see a child inside you. <laughs> you don't believe me, huh? Uh, the, way, the way the Word of God has actually put it from the words and the mouth, I mean, the mouth of Jesus himself, unless you turn or change, you see, either you turn, I mean, turn to the person on your left or the right, or change, really, your heart's attitude, which can be seen through your eyes. Yes, I'm looking good here. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you for that, yes. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, have you, have, you, have you signed a personal data protection policy? <laughs> As a former lawyer here. Now, I need to shift this because uh, um, I, I use a number of PowerPoint slides, and I hope there will be power in the points, or the points in the power. Uh, but just hopefully that there's no power shut off here. I like in places like Myanmar, where every now and then the authorities would just decide to switch off the electricity or the power for the whole town or the village or city. Uh, so it does, doesn't happen here, but if it does happen, just remember what was the previous point. <laughs> because if you missed it, then that's it. Then you have no power to live. Uh, but of course, we, we, don't, we don't depend a modern technology, although we use it. Do I hear amen? amen? We use it to our advantage. We use it to uh, the enhancement. Um, you know, now Media Corp has got three letters. I mean, that starts with the letter E. I mean, three words start with letter E. How many of you actually watch TV? I mean, I mean, watch the program on TV, not just the TV. <laughs> Some people actually watch the TV, but actually the program is watching you. Like me, when I'm very tired, after ministry especially, uh, I come home, I, you know, I, I, I cool off, I chill off, and then I turn on my nothing box in my brain. Have you, heard, have you not heard that before? You know, all the men's brains have, have got boxes. And there's a box for everything. A box for the car, a box for the wife, a box for the children, a box for uh, 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 football, a box for whichever team you, 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 you support. And then there's a nothing box. Which means to say there are times when the men will just think of nothing. And then comes the wife, and then the wife's, the, white, the, male, the female's brain actually is so, so intricately connected, wired. They've got also boxes, but every box, you know, for the car, for the laundry, for the wife, uh, the husband, for the children, for the wardrobe, for the shoes, for the bags, everything connected. That's why they are so well coordinated in their dressing, not like some men. <laughs> right, right, I see, I see. But then when the, when the wife comes to the husband who's you know, sitting on his, the, the, the sofa or the couch, and then he's in his... World of his own is stoning. <laughs> right? Or to some, he said, I'm chilling out. And so the wife comes and asks the, the husband, Dear or darling, what are you thinking? Nothing. <laughs> Ever? Those of you who are married, yes? Uh, I, I see a son even looking at the mother and smiling. Uh, because maybe the mother has asked the son, Can you please go ask your daddy, what is he thinking? But he said nothing. Then the son will go to the father and the father and then ask the father, Daddy, daddy, what are you thinking about? Nothing. Go and tell your mommy. And then the mommy and the son said, cannot be, he's not thinking about anything. There must be something that you're thinking about. And then they try again, both come to the husband now, or the, or the father, and say, at the same time, one, three, daddy, what are you thinking about? Nothing. Well, there is a nothing box. Right now, please turn it off. <laughs> because we are about to think of something which is really, really very, very serious and very, very important. It's called the great Omission. Say the word with me. Great omission. Uh -huh. Some of you have omitted saying it. <laughs> come on, come on. Turn on, turn on the, the talking box. The talking box. Yes. Um, I know most men have got 13,000 words less than women. A day, a day. <laughs> but somebody just told me that I'm of the, of the reverse of my wife, all right? So if you look at my wife, I mean, she is 13,000 words less than mine. Because I'm an educator, I'm an entertainer. You know the three words for media corp? Yeah. What are they? Engage, entertain, and then 
Actually, I like the last one, enrich. How about that? Well, here we're going to engage. Now we say we encounter. We encounter the Lord Jesus Christ. Have you not encountered him so far? Hello? Then you mean the worship team didn't, a good, didn't go to do a good job? Did, hello, hello, hello. Did you not encounter? Right, let me put it in the positive. Did you encounter the presence of Jesus so far today, this morning here? Amen. Turn to the neighbor and say, true or not? True, true, better be true. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Or limited edition. <laughs> All right. And then we, yeah, now, now we actually engage in His Word. And then after that, we go and enlarge His kingdom. Amen. Do I hear amen? amen? Yeah, so don't just sit there because if I'm here to entertain you, you've got to pay me money. <laughs> Hello? But I, we're not going to talk about money here. Although we had just had taken an offering. Right, and it's for the Lord. So, are you ready? Yes. Uh, only a few yeses. Again, please turn to the person next to you and say, turn on your talking box. <laughs> because when Uncle David, I mean, they call me Uncle David. I don't know, I, I mean, uh, or Teacher David, or Brother David, or, but just don't call me Reverend David. Because, you know, uh, by the way, I'm better this also. You look at the screen there. Yeah, Grace by the Church. I know a lot of you have been very, very gracious. A lot of people have even promoted me, upgraded me, anointed me, uh, commissioned me as Reverend Doctor, whatever you, whatever you. I'm no Reverend, no Doctor. Yes, I am relevant. I pray. Can you please say amen to that? Amen. Yeah, because you're going to say in faith. Because not, then you think, I don't know what relevance is he talking about or going to talk about. And because we start on that footing, I'm afraid to say, you will lose me. Or rather, I will lose you. And that's not God's will. So once again, are you ready? Yes. That's much better. In fact, we teach the children to say, I was born ready. Well, <laughs> 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 brothers and sisters of Christ, church, the last command that Jesus gave his church, which therefore we are part of it now, before he ascended to heaven was the great commission. Now, the difference between commission and omission is really just C-O, isn't it? Oh, no, actually C. But the omission is actually with the one M. Okay, so one C and one, one M. So C-M. Hey, by the way, C-M sounds like children's ministry. <laughs> hey, thank you, Holy Spirit, yes. All right, yes. The call to all Christians and all disciples or all believers of Jesus Christ, all those who follow Him and want to say and have said like what you have done just now in your service, in your worship time, I love you, Lord. I love you, Jesus. It's to make disciples of all nations. Say that phrase, make disciples of all nations. Make disciples of all nations. Ah, there's some echoing. I like that, thank you. Just in case some people didn't say it, they don't hear the echo. Oh, yeah. The Holy Spirit is talking. I believe you all will be familiar with if you have read the Bible, at least in the New Testament, at least the first book in the New Testament, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, verses 18 to 20. And if you can, uh, I don't think you can see from here in the front, but if you can see from the side screens, just read along with me. Ready? One, two, three, go. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. When will Jesus be with you? No, that's, that's how long. You didn't answer my question. How long will Jesus be with you? Always. Till the end of the age. But when? Oh, well, would I have received Jesus Christ as a person, Savior, Lord, and I've you know, uh, been baptized, or even He is with me, so He's, you know, He'll never leave me nor forsake me. Yes, that's all true. But here, I want to highlight to us that it is when we go. When we go and make disciples of all nations, because Jesus said in verse 18, which a lot of us actually don't quote when we say the Great Commission, we just start with, therefore go, or go therefore. But under what premise? When Jesus said, came and said to them, and today Jesus is, has come and said to us, all authority has been given to me, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, go therefore. Now the word therefore is there for a reason. 
Hello, you didn't get that? I thought just said go and make disciples. Why go therefore? So there's a therefore, that means there's a before. <laughs> so the, the before verse is important. And of course, in the context of Matthew 28 too. But here just enough for us to know that when Jesus said, it came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore, and, da, 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 and behold. And then, and look, and look, 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 look. Hello, look at me. Thank you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, when we go therefore and make disciples of all nations, we can be assured that the authority that has been given to Jesus both in heaven and on earth now goes with us. If not, we dare not go. Am I right? Well, the story is told of Dr. Reverend Dr. Tony Campolo. Some of you have heard of that name before. He was a senior lecturer of sociology at the Eastern College in Pennsylvania in the USA. And once he was on a plane, and sitting next to him was a Roman Catholic nun. And no, no offense if there's any Roman Catholic nuns here. Or former. Yeah? Um, so the plane was ticking off, and, and she started to take out her rosary, uh, and started to pray frantically, apparently. Not very loud, but uh, Dr. Campolo could, could see that she was shivering. And so, with a very gentle uh, uh, voice, he said to her, uh, Excuse me, sister. Uh, then the sister, Yes. Um, are you, are you afraid? Uh, uh, don't, don't you think I am? <laughs> Look at me. And then after he asked, but you, you believe in Jesus, don't you? Oh, of course I do. Uh, I'm, I, I'm praying to the Father. Um, and then he said, but if you believe in Jesus, and you pray to the Father, then you should have no fear. He's with you always. They said, oh no, uh, you, you don't understand. Jesus said, and lo, I'm with you, but now I'm getting high. <laughs> For those of you who didn't grow up in the King James Version, that was the translation. Behold! <laughs> not, not, law, <laughs> law. Now, that was a joke. Please, if you didn't get that, turn to your neighbor and say, huh, that was a joke, huh? <laughs> And if you laugh towards the way to the toilet, then it's fine. But you see, a lot of us as Christians throughout the centuries have responded by making Christians or making decision makers, not disciples. This according to the brilliant scholar and renowned Christian thinker, the late Dallas Willard, who just gone home to glory in uh, 2013, has been the church's great omission. Is this as an, as an example? Uh, the Gospel for Asia, uh, based in the United Kingdom, actually found that of all the giving to the church, that's in England, only 0.3% or 30 pence out of 100 pounds is used to take the gospel to unreached areas. That means to say areas that the gospel hasn't been preached before. And then we use 96.8% of our resources on ourselves and to reach the Christian part of our world. What about us in Singapore? We are celebrating SG50. The Lord has been so good to us. Do I hear Amen. We have been blessed to be a blessing. We are the, we've been called to, to be the Antioch of Asia, to send out missionaries and to do great exploits for the kingdom of Jesus. How much or what is the percentage of our resources? Personally, corporately, have we used or have we put aside or have we decided to give towards taking the gospel to the unrich areas? In 2010, and it's interesting that uh, the, the, the prophetic words given from the father to the son and the daughter and the church here was in 2010. I'll come to that. I, I, was, I was so thrilled in my spirit just now. I said, wow, 2010. Because 2010 was the third Lausanne Congress on World Evangelization, uh, which was in South Africa, Cape Town. All right? Although our sister is from Uganda, but, you know, the Africa continent. Wow. Uh, and it was 2010... And that theme then, now the Lausanne Congress, by the way, was first started by uh, people like Dr. Billy Graham and then the late Reverend Dr. John Stott from England. And uh, they, they, they gathered together all these world uh, evangelists and, and people who bring the gospel to unrich areas. And so in 1974, I believe, was the first congress, and then 2010 was the third. So I was blessed to be there. And the theme then was taking the whole gospel 
by the whole church to the whole world. Get that? The whole gospel by the whole church to the whole world. This is 2000 and? This year is 2000 and? So we are five years down the road. How far have we brought the gospel? Well, I've got some statistics here and I'm not uh, uh, going to spend all the time to do that because you can always Google that in this day and age. But at least to, to understand that unrich or least rich people group is a people group among, their, about, among which there is no indigenous community of believing Christians with adequate numbers and resources to evangelize this people group. Now, there was this original Joshua project that, you know, started this whole thing. And what they selected as a criterion is that less than 2% evangelical Christian and less than 5% Christian adherents in that particular place would be known as the least rich or the unriched people group. That's a very small minority, isn't that so? But where do these people live? Well, there's this thing called the 1040 window. Everybody says 1040 you got to say it clearly because others there's a 414. I don't want you to get confused. Say 1040. 1040. That's right. Where's the 1040 window? Well, look at that whole span of countries 10 degrees north of the equator to 40 degrees north of the equator. That's why it's got 1040 window. Look at the countries there. You may not be able to see everyone, but then the next slide will show you a little bit more. And Northern Africa. I think Uganda is there. No, no Uganda is not north. Sorry. Next slide, please. Where is Uganda, sister? South, right? East. Is it there? Yes. So we're talking about your country. And you are here. There's no coincidence. Hallelujah. Well, it's not just our oh, dear sister. I mean, Malaysia, Singapore. I mean, look at the whole span. 10 degrees north of the equator. Now, we're just above the equator, right? How many degrees? Two, three, one. Okay, but we're near enough. Right? I mean, compared to the Arctic Circle or the Antarctica. But look at these countries. Almost the whole of the northern hemisphere or the northern continent of Africa, the whole of India, some of you come from there. Where's your sister Amara David? Not here. Okay. Well, um, great part of China and our so called golden triangle of <laughs> drug trafficking and uh, prostitution and what have you. Myanmar, previously known as Burma, Laos, Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia, even Malaysia. Yes. Well, what happens is this. Two-thirds of the world's population, which is more than 3.2 billion people, uh, then, which is at least five years ago, now I think it's crossed 7 billion, 7 point over billion. So two-thirds of them actually live in this 1040 window. And world religions, Islam, Buddhism, and Hinduism, are centered in the 1040 window. Hey, what about Christianity? Don't you know that we're still a minority religion compared to these three? Especially in these 1040 window countries. Am I right, sister? Yes. And so, what challenges you and me, therefore, is that when Jesus said, even 2,000 years ago to the first church that he birthed, go therefore and make disciples of how many nations? Hello, how many nations? And what have we done? Yes, we may have, we may have brought the gospel to the African countries, but not necessarily the nations, which in the Greek, as you, some of you have attended, you know, CVSOM and all that, you said under Pastor Bilford and all the others, is the word for ethnos or ethnicity, ethnic groups. So in the likes of the Chinese ethnic groups, what have you? What have you? Hokkien, Teochew, Cantonese. And by the way, you know, the, the Chinese zodiac, you know, this year they celebrate the year of the what? Excuse me, year of the what? Meh. Meh is good, right? But then they also have the sheep. So what does, what sheep, uh, what, does uh, sheep, uh, what sound do sheep make? Hello, you can't make the difference? <laughs> you didn't go to kindergarten, huh? <laughs> Haven't you sung, ba, ba, black sheep? Oh, that's only for the black sheep. White sheep also, by the way. 
Those, those of you who go to the agrodrome uh, in, in Australia or New Zealand, I done, I done farms there. Have you not heard what how sheep or lambs sound like? Definitely not me. By the way, me maybe it's a Teochew sheep. Me me wa me me wa me me wa. Or the Teochew goat lah, huh? Yeah. By the way. Ah, uh, no wonder many Chinese are confused. But as Christians, we must not be confused. Do I hear amen? amen? We must be so focused and so Christ-centered because as Christ said, go therefore and make disciples, not decision makers, of all nations. And the 1040 window has so many of the nations or ethnic groups which have not really heard the gospel or may have heard us once, but many of them have not been rich. Take a look at this statistics quickly. Eight, six, five million unrich Muslims or Islamic live there. They are in 3,330 cultural subgroupings. Just like, you know, you got a Hokkien. I think but Reverend Francis, you're Hokkien, right? Or Baba. Or Teochew. Oh, sorry, you're the meh-meh one. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> no wonder he doesn't say Baba, see? That's why I thought he was Paranakan, Paranakan. <laughs> Is it the Hawkins? You know, you, uh, how many people are Hawkins? Hawkins, yes. Thank you. You know, from uh, your, your, your ancestor came from China and then you come from uh, Fujian, right? Fujian, then you got the, the Amoy. That's why you got Amoy Street. Uh, the Amoy Hawkins, the Ameng, right? Uh, I know a people come from Aumeng. Back door. <laughs> That's why they got Haokang. Haokang, Haokang. Haokang, Haokang. See, all these are subgroupings, and even the Cantonese. I mean, I'm the Toy San Apa, you know? How many of you from Toy San? You know what's Toy San? Oh, yeah, I've got a Toy San. You know, it, and then my wife actually is Teochew, by the way, and her grand, grandmother actually comes from a place called Swatow, isn't it? Oh, also Guangzhou, but see, see from Guangzhou, we still got, got Teochew. All these are subgroupings, friends. And it's so hard to reach them. So there are 550 million unreached Hindus in 16,600 cultural subgroups. Migrants, the list goes on. Including the 17 million Jews scattered all across 134 countries who also need to come to a saving knowledge of the Messiah Jesus. Well, you see, the unreached and unevangelized form 95% of people living in the 1040 window which was about five, five years ago, but I don't think we've gone very far. Because, you see, 85% of those living in the temple we know are still the poorest of the world's poor. Because if the whole gospel has been taken by the whole church to the whole world, which includes the world's poorest of the poor, then they should not be poor anymore. Do I hear amen? In India, we have at least two of the most unrich people groups in the world today. The Ansari, not those who just wear saris, huh? the Ansari of India, 10.5 million Islams. The 56.8 million Hindus of the Yadava people of India. And of course, the Hui tribe of China, 12.5 million. You'd be surprised to find that there are actually Islams, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Muslims in China. My wife and I have been released in the last couple of years to go to places in China. And we have been to one place which actually has got a lot of concentration of M's, we call them. And it's very, very sensitive. We can't speak uh, in English in public. Uh, and let alone speak Chinese because our Chinese also got a Singaporean accent. You know, all the li li la la. <laughs> yeah, quite <quite-in-la. laughs> la. Then the moment we la here, la there, only they know then we may be, we may pay la. Gana caught. So be careful. And so pray for us. Well, but the good news is, thank God, that the, there's not all bad news because Jesus comes to bring what news? Good news? And the church of Jesus Christ, representing him, has got to take on that unfinished task. Well, thank God that at least in 1989, when there were only four known Christians in Mongolia, how many have been to Ulaanbaatar or Mongolia? 
Oh, yes, I see one hand there. Thank you, yes. Well, today, well, there are more than 10,000 indigenous believers. And there's a church that is growing very strongly. I think it's called a Hope Church there. Um, Christian television programs can now be received in some of these closed 1040 windows. And I believe we hear Dr. Jerry Horner uh, on Resurrection Sunday, and probably he'll be accompanied by uh, your uncle, <laughs> the Reverend Dr. Ku Hin Hyung, who will share probably more and, uh, uh, in the conversations that you will have with him about how uh, radio and, and, and uh, this mega voice uh, instrument that is being uh, produced actually has been able to reach many, many in these closed door 1040 windows. And of course, uh, more than one million worth of goods, uh, food of goods, to one of the four 1040, only, only one, just one, goodness. Then we need more of those refugee camps. One North African country that is hostile of the gospel, abundant rain fell on one Easter service. How about this coming Easter service? Hello? I know we were complaining about the heat and the, the weather in Singapore. Let's pray that, you know, while we, we, we yearn for rain, there's some countries that really have not seen rain or felt rain for many, many years. Am I right? Well, Christians have brought rain to the desert. And we also need to bring rain, spiritual rain, to the spiritual deserts. Right here in our midst. Well, missions researcher David Barrett says the country that has the most Christian expansion ever is China, where there are now, of course, more than 10,000 new Christian converts every day. You'd be surprised, uh, whether is it in the, the, what is known as the government-approved uh, three self-churches in China or the family churches that uh, previously were underground, but now they've been surfaced, so they're above ground. They're called family churches these days. They, they are growing, and they're crying out for help in training their teachers to teach children. So please be thankful for your fire starters, fireers. <laughs> and if you've not been fired so far, and I was so blessed to see that because not many churches, by the way, do this or do what you all just did or what Pastor Francis did just now. And for you to join in to bless the next generation, which I'll come to uh, towards the end, but before the end too. Right, so, therefore, the Word of God, which has... The whole gospel has to be taken by the whole church to the whole world. And what is needed a lot in, in all of these places is Bible translation. So pray for the work of the Bible Society and all these weekly Bible translators and all those who are involved in that. It's hard work. You think learning Mandarin is very difficult in Singapore? Hello, I see a young man there and the rest of you who are not so young. <laughs> One fine day, God will call you. <laughs> don't ever say to God, please don't send me to uh, some of these countries like China. Because one sister of ours who prayed that prayer, she was, you know, giving her life to Jesus. I mean, she was working uh, with me in, in Scripture Union previously. And then after she, she left, she joined her own church as a church worker. And then after that, she, she called it a day in the sense that she was led by the Lord. And then she wants to go itinerant also. And then she said, Lord, please don't send me to two countries. You can send me to any country, but don't send me to these two. And she named this, and this, this is the fact. She has shared it. So she said, please don't send me to India or China. No offense, please, to our, 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 our Indian friends. Because, you know, uh, she, she can't take the fragrance. <laughs> Number one. Uh, then for China, she said, I, I, I really cannot take all the spitting and all the spittums and all the, and all the toilets with no doors. <laughs> so you talk about your kindergarten, <laughs> a low, low one. This one, no door at all. <laughs> the moment you enter, you say, hello, Tepian. <laughs> Oh, the ladies are to bring umbrellas and bring medicated oil. <laughs> now, some of you know what I'm talking about. For those of you who are gener gener younger generation, you do not know, please, you be so thankful. Just that we bless the Lord, oh my soul. Today, in many toilets in China, you don't have, I mean, you, you have doors. But still, there are. You know, my wife and I, we've been to some place, she has to go back, no offense, huh? because it's a really, I mean, for the ladies, it's really tough for you to squat. And for the older ones, who, you squat already, you cannot get up. <laughs> yeah so you know you, you but what happened to this lady huh, the lord sent her to these two countries <laughs> and one of the worst worst experiences she had was the very first trip to china with another sister and they had it the worst experience but you know what they said the lord knows best daddy knows best give us the worst for our first trip so that the rest of the trips Sup, sup, sorry. 
wet wet water in direct transit. That means no problem. Chicken feet. Because they've seen it, they said the worst. Anyway, you want to know more details? Ask my wife. But thank God that the Bible has been translated in many of these languages and sub languages and and all. And but 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 there's still many of these unrich people tribes tongues who have yet to receive even portions of their scripture, of of our scripture in English. I mean, in their language. Therefore, friends, relish. Thank God for the word that we have, both in printed media form as well as electronic media form. You know, now instead of turn your Bibles to, you say click your Bibles to or you swipe your Bible to. And then you can choose different translations and then to check whether the pastor is preaching the right one or not. <laughs> for example, you know, if the pastor or the preacher is preaching from you know, the MOV, you know, you got NIV, you know, New International Version, you got ESV, English Standard Version, you got all these other versions, and then you got the MOV. Do you know what that is? My own version. <laughs> but with this, I want to bring to you what Dr. Dan Brewster um, from Compassion International, the almost equivalent, if I would say, to World Vision, where they have, you know, things that sponsor a child and, and all that. But he is a theologian, actually, and he did a lot of research, and he also then pioneered and started this whole uh, postgraduate program leading to a PhD in holistic child development. And one of the nearest places to do that program uh, is actually in Penang, in the Baptist Theological Seminary, interestingly. And listen to what he has found. Most pastors, most church leaders, most mission leaders, most seminary people know that uh, Jesus had a few things to say about children. He accepted them. He accepted their worship. When he got angry, he was angry at his disciples keeping the children from coming to him. He said, make sure you don't cause any of these little ones to stumble because I tell you they're angels in heaven always see the face of the Father, suggesting that children have angels. He says that if you cause one of these to stumble, you might as well have a millstone tied about your neck and thrown into the deepest part of the sea. Pastors know that. Missionaries know those, those passages. Even seminary professors know those passages, but that's about all they know. They don't know that there's more than 1,400 references, and many of those references have theological significance. Many of them talk about how God uses children to further his kingdom and uses children for his purposes, but it's been ignored. I have in my shelf a book called Christian Theology, and it's a book of about 12 or 1300 pages. And if you go to the index of that book, you look for children, two or three or four references. That's it. Students in seminaries today can get very lofty degrees in their, in their seminary program and never see anything about children. Never see that they're important. Never see how God uses them. Never see how important it is in their future church ministries to know about and affirm children and parenting and that sort of thing. We know about the great commission. The great omission is all of these scripture references that are never addressed by our students, by our church leaders, seminary students. And so I call it the great omission. So, let me test you. How many Bible references are there that Dr. Dan Brewster has found in Scripture that have relations or have talked about children? 14,000? 13? 1,300? At the back there? Yes, young man there? Yes, you're touching you. Yes? 1,004. Now, so we got 14,000, we got 1,300, or 13,000 to 1,300. 1,300, and then you got 1,400. So, A, B, C. Which one is correct? Those who say A, raise your hands. Uh, that's one percent. I mean, obviously, she said that, right? Now, <clears throat> maybe because of the Malaysian ringgit transfer, transfer rate, <laughs> yeah, because 14,000, uh, thank you, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, 1,300, are uh, there 13,000? 13,000? 1,300? One. Only one, obviously. Uh, 
1400 or 1004? Thank you. The rest of you sleeping. Uh. <laughs> oh, you didn't get that, huh? Because it was in Burmese? <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Young man, thank you. See, that's why young men will dream dreams. Old men see visions. <laughs> because the old men already, you know, see double vision. <laughs> already hard of hearing. <laughs> no, no offense to the older ones, please. Thank you. Right. Yes, 1,400. More than 1,400. Now you go and check it out. Now what Dr. Danbury says, say therefore, look, we have PhDs in one of you, but we gloss over, we ignore what Scripture has to say about how God has and is and will continue to use children to usher in the kingdom or to fulfill the Great Commission. That's why, friends, in the scripture text I was given, I, that I've given to you in the bulletin, uh, if there's, you're not written any one point that has impacted you today, now is the time to write it. Verse 42 of Mark 9. And in the context of Mark 9, it's very interesting because it talks, Mark talks about all different kinds of things. And then they started with something, and then he, he skipped, I mean, he skipped in the sense the Holy Spirit directly to somebody else. And then he came back to this one verse in verse 42. And if anyone, say anyone. But did everyone say it? Hello? Turn to your neighbor and say, that includes you. Turn to your neighbor and say, that includes you. That means if anyone, satu orang saja, if anyone causes one, say one. How many? One of these little ones. How little is little? Little lah. Little enough for this, this child to be brought or be invited by Jesus and the child came, whether brought by someone, at least the child was willing to come with that someone, to be stood in the midst of the disciples in the context of Matthew 18, there's a twin passage there, where, in fact, Mark 9, the earlier verses actually did say that they were discussing, and Jesus was asking them, what are you discussing on the way here? And the discussion was, who is the greatest among us in the kingdom of heaven? The disciples of Jesus Christ were trying to you know, compare notes as it were, see, well, who's got more favor from the Lord? Who's the greatest among us in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus asked for a child to stand in the midst of them. And Jesus said, unless you receive one of these little ones in my name, you receive me. When you receive one of these, you receive me. And if you do not change, like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven, let alone be the greatest. Wow. And then verse 42, Jesus warned us. If anyone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, say, to sin. Oh, you did not say so loud, right? Yeah. And please note that therefore little ones can believe in Jesus. Because Jesus said, little ones who believe in me, that means it is possible. Do I hear amen? amen. So that's why thank God for your fires who are doing a great job with the fire starters. Because they must have the fire started in them when they are young. Not when they grow old. Because when they grow old, remember the Proverbs 22 verse 6? Train up a child in the way he should go and when he grows old, he will not depart from it. It didn't say, train up an old man in the way he should go and then when he gets older, he will not turn, about, turn, around, uh, turn away from it. Train up a child. Say, child. child. Turn to neighbor and say, child. child. Turn to your neighbor, please. Child. Yeah. Although you can say to yourself, yeah, child, child, child. Who believe in me to sin, it would be better. <laughs> Say better. <laughs> so better watch out. For him to be thrown into the, into the sea with a large millstone. Maybe you can't throw somebody, but if you hang the person with a large millstone, you can throw him. Tight around his neck. There's a hundred percent guarantee chop, we say, she'll drown one. She'll die. It's not just a small millstone. Jesus actually emphasized large. Say large. large. How large? Not as large as that one, actually. You see, we'll be severely punished for causing believing children to sin. Take a look at the real large millstone. It's taller than me. <laughs> By the way, I'm not short. <laughs> I'm tall. Pastor Wilfred is taller. <laughs> so that's why I said the millstone is taller than me. I'm tall. So friends... This is a serious warning for those who actually commit the great commission, I mean, the great omission. Maybe some of you are waiting for some great commission uh, 
to get involved in the Great Commission. No, you need, you need to pay for it. Yeah, I mean, you need to pay yeah, for it, for it to be done. But to be done by yourself. Maybe, maybe not in terms of money, but in terms of your time, in terms of your energy, term, in terms of your attitude, beginning with that paradigm shift. I serve among children and young people in Singapore, and I tell you that even among the Methodist schools, uh, any one of you from the Methodist schools previously? Hello, thank you. Yes, uh, what about Anglicans? No? Presbyterians? No? Roman Catholic schools? Oh, wow, so many. Wow, thank God, just I said, please don't offense the Roman Catholic nuns. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> don't stone me to death. <laughs> well, I'm not quite sure about the Roman Catholic schools, but of course, uh, they, they do have their, their devotions. Whatever. But in the Methodist, Presbyterian, and Anglican schools, because it's, they're, they're actually MOE schools, Ministry of Education schools, they have, they're not paid by pop, uh, public funding. Even though it's a Methodist or Presbyterian or Anglican school, they are now not, in fact, for the last 10 years or more already, that's the case, you haven't woken up to it, maybe because you're not aware of it, so I don't blame you, that you can't have public altar call. Even during the Holy Week, what we call special services, they were previously known as Religious Emphasis Week. Now they cannot even use that term because it's too religiously sensitive. They have to use the word like Discovery Jesus Hour. Hello, sounds like Channel News Asia. I mean, <laughs> or, 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 or whatever, or, or cable TV, uh, HBO, what have you. You know, like National Geographic. But fine, we, we could be creative in that and no public altar call. There was no raising of our hands, those who want to pray to receive Jesus Christ or those who would like to pray to receive Jesus Christ. And then come to the front of the service, we'll talk to you further. Nah, they all have to go back to class, number one. Number two, they're not even allowed to raise their hands. Mission schools. Well, therefore, the time is clicking away. There are a lot more people lobbying. They say, why, why must my child attend chapel service? We are not Christians, you know. And by the way, the Muslim children are exempted because it was naturally gazetted in the past. But for the rest of them, they're now lobbying. And you need to pray that God will continue to show His favour upon the leaders of the mission schools, and many of them are the younger principals now. No offence to those, up uh, to them, but many of them do not have the, uh, the school's heritage, by the way. But, you see, Jesus said in Matthew 11, and with that, I'm coming to almost the end. Matthew 11, 25, 26, uh, some verses that are seldom talked about, or preached about, or even looked upon, or looked at. At that time, in God's Kairos moment, Jesus said, he was talking to the Father, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned and have revealed to little children. How many of you think that you are wise? Because you've got some grey hair? Or you have eaten more salt than you've eaten more rice than your children and grandchildren? Please don't say that because your grandchildren will say, that's why right, grandpa, grandma, that's why you've got hypertension. Too much salt, no good for you. Who think that you are, you are very learned? Uh, no, don't, don't dare to put up your hands now. Huh? Well, no offense. We, we need knowledge. We need wisdom. But when they become a stumbling block, when they cause us to be proud, when they cause us to say, I know it all already. By the way, including many of the young people and children these days in the Sunday school or in the children's churches, they say, I know already this story, five loaves, two fishes. Jesus fed the 5,000. Jesus come the, the wind and the waves. I know already. Because last year, my Sunday school teacher taught me already. Or my daddy has told me already this story when I was a baby. I know already. Now, that's, that's the, the attitude of many of our next generation. Now, we need to pray against that spirit of indifference in our next generation. And it starts from us. How do we inquire scripture? How do we come before the Lord in His Word? It's the same old passage. After a Good Friday, it's Good Friday, what? Was there ever a bad Friday? <laughs> I mean, resurrection is resurrection. So why go through all this big hustle and you know, getting Brother Tony Lowe here and uh, wow, Dr. Jerry Horner and, and the likes? Same, same, what? You know, the t shirt? 
Have you ever bought that T-shirt from Bangkok? Chat, chat, chat. Or, 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 Thai, or, or whatever, Cambodia. Same, same, and then the back, but different. <laughs> yes, it's the same old story. I mean, the old, old story. It is ever new. Because then now God gives fresh revelation, fresh anointing for this season. Do I hear amen? Right. Yes, Father, this is what you were pleased to do. How many of you like to do what Jesus, or what God the Father is pleased to do? Come on. Raise your hand. Come on. How many of you like to do what the Father is pleased to do? Come on. That's what just said when Pastor Francis prayed about how Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, not to get some money, you know, by the way. Hello, you didn't hear that, huh? It's okay. <laughs> but he was prayed, God, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And he taught the disciples to pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hello, what is your name, is it? <laughs> Holy is your name. Hallowed be your name. Some children will say his name is Howard. <laughs> <laughs> your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And here Jesus said one of the things that the Father was pleased to do or you were pleased to do, but doesn't mean that he's not pleased to do now because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is the man that, what? He should not lie. He doesn't change his mind. Especially when it is something good. Yes, Father, this was what you were pleased to do. And what was the Father pleased to do was to hide the hidden, to hide these things, things of the kingdom, things of the spirit from the wise and the learned because they're too proud because pride goes before a downfall. And God opposes the proud, but lifts up or raises the humble. And children have that humbling spirit. These children naturally depend on adults. If this is what the father was pleased to do, then we jolly well do it. Turn to your neighbor and say, just do it. Do, do what? I mean, which is to reveal to little children and, and be in the conduit, the channel of God's blessing, to reveal to little children. And actually, by the way, God doesn't need us. He can go direct. So you be privileged to be part of that work of the Spirit, work of God, to, to be involved with children in the next generation. You see, Luke's translation, which is very, very interesting, the same passage. At that time, Jesus, full of joy to the Holy Spirit, now, I, I hope that your fires, I call it fires, uh, those who are in the fire starter ministry, they are still full of joy through the Holy Spirit. But, but having been a Christian educator for all these years and involved in children's ministry for so many years, I can tell you and I plead on the behalf of the children and the fires, the teachers of the children's ministry, please bless them. Don't blast at them. You say, hey, why you never teach my child properly? Eh? You jolly well come in and teach, ah. Eh? They don't care. I don't know the Bible very well. They come to Bible school. <laughs> if you don't come to Bible school, then go to the go to some other uh, causes and, and upgrading. You know, we, we talk about upgrading, upgrade, no? renovation. Yeah, we need to renovate our mind, our hearts. Don't give that lame excuse. I don't know the Bible, therefore I cannot be a teacher of the Word of God. Since when we all become a teacher of the Word of God because we, just because we know the Bible. Hello. We grow into it. Full of joy to the Holy Spirit because he said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and revealed to, say with me, little children. So don't belittle the children just because they're little. Don't belittle the young people because they're young. Paul told Timothy, right? Let no one despise you because you are young, but set yourself as an example to the believers in faith. In all those areas of faith, purity, conduct, love. Well, I want to close with this challenge which is the 414 window. Now, just show the video clip, my dear sisters. All right? Um, you, can, you can read more about that if you Google uh, 4 to 14 windowcom But before you show the video clip about um, the... Um, it's time to wake up, the last video clip, right? But before that, huh? let me just end with this challenge. You see, friends, brothers and sisters of Christ, the devil, Satan, has a plan. And his plan is to kill, steal, and destroy everything that God wants. To do. Am I right? Am I right? Yes. So whatever Jesus has come to do and has done on the cross and now through the Holy Spirit that God wants to do to usher in the kingdom, to fulfill the great commission, to making all disciples of all nations, the devil wants to destroy that. 
And one third of the world's population actually are below 15 years old, which means to say in this 414 window, which you're going to hear about in this video clip that says it's time to wake up. It's a message for the church, for the family, for the nation and nations. Because now it's already 2015, 2010, the Lord already started this decade of 414 window, which means to say in the 10 year span of a child's life, most important and most likely to come to faith in Jesus Christ. And therefore, the earlier you do that, the more time they have to be rooted in God's word and then to be released as agents of God's transformation. The later you do it, the harder it becomes. Try to talk to some young people, undergraduates, about the gospel, it's more challenging. So the devil knows that. Therefore, therefore the, the, the devil's plan is to make sure that if he cannot destroy children, as he's tried to do in history, but he'll steal away their attention or he'll kill the joy of, of knowing God. And a lot of times, we are the ones who have created that kill joy experience for children. Because we have hindered them from coming to, the, to know the Lord Jesus. We have caused them to sin because, when they believe in Jesus Christ. For that matter, we did not even bother to lead them to come to faith in Jesus Christ, especially those of us who are Christian parents. But don't blame yourself. Start today. Some things have to stop, which is this indifference and this neglect or this belittling of children. But some things have to start, which is believing that God has called you to fulfill the Great Commission. And part of the Great Commission is not to omit children in the next generation. And there were some things that have to change. Your heart's attitude, your mindset, and your conduct, your behavior. Go and bless the fires. Go and be part of them and go and sign up as, as, as a helper and then an assistant and then become a teacher. Because it is not the will of God that any one of these little ones should perish. Matthew 18, 14. And so friends, brothers and sisters of Christ, we said we love Jesus. And Jesus received that, but he's going to ask you back, do you really love me so much more than all these? Because if you do, as, in, as he said to, to Peter in John 21, feed my man, man. Tend or take care of my sheep, and including the ba ba black sheep, but feed my sheep. By the way, wolves will not attack sheep if they can find lambs because they're more tender. They're, more e- they're easier to catch. So, Don't let the evil one catch or snatch our little lambs away. It's time to wake up.
างกับแมมมี่ชื่ออย่าปล่อยให้หนูหลุดมือไปนะคะ You're losing us I'm losing us You're 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 losing us You have seen, you have heard, and I pray right now that you will be so touched to respond to God's call, not to be involved in the great omission, but to be involved in the great commission. Whether is it with the elderly or men's ministry or women's ministry, but I pray right now that you will want to support, encourage. And be open, be led to be involved with the next generation, whether it's the young people or children. And I, as I said earlier, I get so excited when it was August 2010, the beginning of the 1040 window decade that the Holy Spirit has has ushered in worldwide. And you're moving to a new premises that was a previous child care center, and the, and many of the things were were made suitable for the next generation. Although yes, we need to renovate the toilets and, and all that, but that patio, that that playground, where children can come and have fun and 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 play in the presence of God, and in the presence of people who love them and who want to feed them with God's word and and take care of them and disciple them, and so in, in this few moments that we have, I just ask that if that's Your response that you yes you say yes I, I want to be involved in the Great Commission especially to to reach the next generation and make a difference in the next generation, which means the 414 or even the the slightly older ones. Could you just indicate by a show of hands quickly? Raise your hand and then I just pray a prayer over you. Yes, everyone just respond to the Lord. Just lift up your hand. Yes, I see that hand. Thank you. See the hand. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. See the hand. Praise God. Even for the elderly who wants to reach the young, praise God. Thank you. Any others? Yes, thank you, Lord. Yes, I see that finger too. Yes, part of your hand. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, I see that hand. Praise God. Praise God. Yes, I see that hand. Yes, God. God looks down from heaven and is happy. He wants to fill it with all joy to the Holy Spirit, as Jesus was filled with all joy to the Holy Spirit, praising God the Father. That he has hidden these hidden things and revealed to little children, and you and I want to be part of that great commission. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. So, Father, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you pour forth your wisdom, your understanding, and your resources upon this church and upon these souls, especially these brothers and sisters who have indicated that yes, they want to be involved in this great commission to make disciples of children. The next generation, and I believe not just in Singapore, 
but because this church is positioned to bless the nations too. And therefore, out to the nations, to the ethnic groups, where there are children and young people. So Lord, bless each one, especially those who have indicated their desires. Equip them, Lord, I pray, and encourage them. Hear us our prayers, Lord. We give you thanks. And all God's people say, Amen. Thank you, Pastor Francis.